This video is on solving radical, radical equations. This time we're going to be solving the rational exponent equations, which means that we will end up having the inverse of radicals and rational exponents. We're going to actually, we have our steps to solve. The steps to solve are the same as if they were radical equations. So the first step is to isolate the radical. In this case, the radical actually comes from the rational exponent. So if we look at this problem real quick, the exponent, which is a fraction, is what would have turned it into a radical. And whatever that is attached to would become your radicand. So whatever your exponent is attached to is, your, is what you would need to isolate. The second step is we would raise the entire equation to the power of the radical, which this time we don't have a radical itself, so we can't just raise it to the index. This, this time we'll do, or the reciprocal of the fraction exponent. So since we have a fraction exponent, we would raise it to the reciprocal of this exponent. The reason we want to raise it to the reciprocal is we want the exponent to go away. And if we raise a power to a power, those two numbers will multiply to each other. We want two numbers to multiply to give us a 1 to make the entire exponent go away. So 2 over 3 times 3 over 2 would give us the 1. So that's why we do the reciprocal. After we've gotten rid of the exponent, we'll end up solving just for the variable, because we'll, we'll have that one variable by itself. And then the last step is to always check for your extraneous solution. So we're going to plug our answer back to the original and then make sure that they work. Because again, if they don't work, they're called extraneous solutions, which came from a false solution. Okay, so our first example, is the x plus 2 raised to the 2 thirds equals 9. So I'm going to first highlight what needs to be isolated. So again, the fraction exponent is what you start with. And then whatever that is attached to is what needs to be isolated. So that entire x plus 2 needs to be isolated with the exponent. So if you look at that highlight, there's nothing on the left of the highlight and there's nothing on the right of the highlight except the equals. So that means that that first step is done. It has been isolated. So I want to rewrite this problem so that I can work, it, work with it because I don't want to mess up my original. So I write out the parentheses x plus 2 parentheses raised to the 2 thirds is equal to 9. So now that we've done step 1, it is isolated. We can go to step 2. So in this case, again, we don't have the radical. We want to raise it to the reciprocal of the fraction exponent. So I take both sides of the equation and I raise it to the reciprocal of our fraction. 2 over 3, the reciprocal of that is 3 over 2. 3 over 2. So I have to do that on both sides. Now on the left, this becomes 2 times 3 and 3 times 2, which gives us a 1. That is why we are doing this. Remember, this would have been the cube root of all of this squared. That's why we can still do the same process because the fraction exponent actually is a radical. It's just written differently. So the left hand side will become just x plus 2 equals. Now the right hand side we actually have to understand that because this is a radical we want to rewrite this as a radical. Now yes you can put that into your calculator but there's a reason why you want to know what type of radical this is. So our radical, our radicand will be the base, which is our 9. The index is the denominator of your fraction, so it's the square root. And then we're going to have raised to the exponent of 3, because it's just the, your numerator is your exponent. Now, the reason we want to see this is you can put the 3 on the inside, but I'd rather do the square root of 9 than trying to take 9 cubed and then take the square root of that. Now, the main reason you need to know what type of radical this is is because since we're solving, if you end up taking the square root, you have to have the plus or minus. So we're actually missing this plus or minus sign. This is why you need to know that this is a square root and no longer a cube root. When you take the reciprocal and your denominator is even, you have to put the plus or minus. 
So now to simplify this a little bit, we have x plus 2 is equal to, I'm going to keep that plus or minus, the square root of 9 is 3, and then we still have it cubed. So now we have x plus 2 equals plus or minus, 3 cubed is 27. So we have x plus 2 equals positive 27, and x plus 2 equals negative 27. So x plus 2 equals the positive 27, and x plus 2 equals the negative 27. So we'll end up with two answers. We'll have x equals, we have to subtract the 2, so we'll have 25. x equals, we have to subtract the 2, so we'll get negative 29. Now we need to check them. We do need to check them. And you can put this in your calculator. So I'm going to take my calculator and I'm going to check the positive 25 first. So parentheses, 25 plus 2, close parentheses, raised to the power of, since it's a fraction, I'm going to put parentheses around my fraction regardless of what type of calculator I have. 2 divided by 3, close parentheses. Now, this should give us a 9. Let's see if it does. It does. So that means that 25 is a good answer. I can highlight that one. So I'm going to redo this. I'm going to do negative 29. So parentheses, negative 29 plus 2, close parentheses, raised to the power of, so I'm going to do parentheses because it's a fraction, 2 divided by 3, close parentheses, and it should give us 9, and it does. That means that both of these answers are correct. So these did check. We checked both of them using the calculator, so that didn't have enough room to write the check on here. But both of these answers do work, so we do not have extraneous solutions on here. Now again, this happens when you have the reciprocal, when your reciprocal has an even denominator. So if you take an even root, You have to put that plus or minus. That means when you, the reciprocal of it. On this next problem, again, I want to figure out what needs to be highlighted, what needs to be isolated. So I go to my exponent, my fraction exponent, and whatever is directly attached to it, which is the parentheses set. That is what needs to be isolated. That means that we need to get that 3 away from it. So in order to get that 3 away from it, we need to divide by that 3. So if we were to divide by that 3, it would become parentheses, x plus 3 parentheses raised to the 3 fourths is equal to 81 divided by 3 is 27. So I went ahead and did that. It's just getting that 3 away from it. It's multiplied, so we know we have to divide it. Now that it's isolated, the highlighted part is now isolated. We raise it to the reciprocal of our exponent. So 3 fourths reciprocal is 4 over 3. Now in this case, the denominator is odd. We do not have the plus or minus. So we'll have x plus 3 equals. I do want to rewrite this as a radical, so I put a radical symbol. My base is 27 because that's my radicand, or my radicand is 27 because that's my base. The index is your denominator, so that's your 3. And then we have to the 4th power because that's our numerator. Now, I do not want to do 27 to the 4th power, but I do know the cube root of 27. So I can put x plus 3 equals. Instead of having the parentheses outside of it all, I could have the parentheses the 4 on the outside of the parentheses instead, like this. So the cube root of 27 is 3, and then I can raise that to the 4th power. So I have x plus 3 equals 3 to the 4th power is 81. And now I can solve. So I want to subtract the 3, I get x equals 78. Now I do want to check it, and this time I do have room to write, so I'm going to put my check here. 
I have three parentheses, 78 plus three, close parentheses, raised to the three-fourths. It's supposed to equal to 81, so we put a question mark there. So again, it's three parentheses, 78 plus three, close parentheses, raised to the, since it's a fraction, I'm going to put parentheses around my fraction, three over four, because I'm putting it into the original. This is supposed to give us 81. It does. That means that this checks. No extraneous solution. That means I can highlight my 78. X equals 78. On example 7, so I'm going to highlight again the exponent and then what it's attached to. So the parentheses. I need to get that alone. In order to get that alone, this is not a 3 times anything. This is actually a positive 3 plus something. So I just want to get this 3 to the other side by subtracting that 3. So in this case, I'll actually have the 4 minus x, close parentheses, raised to the 3 over 2, will be equal to, I just want to subtract the 3 from the 11. So that will actually give us an 8. Now that it's isolated, we can raise it to the power of the reciprocal. So 3 over 2 the reciprocal is 2 thirds on both sides. So we have on the left hand side we have 4 minus x equals. I want to turn this into a radical because I don't have, I'm not going to use my calculator on it right now. My base is 8 so my radicand is 8. My denominator is 3, so my index is 3. My exponent is 2, because my numerator is 2. Now, this is a cube root, so I do not have a plus or minus, so that's good. Now I just want to simplify this. So I have 4 minus x equals. I can do 8 squared, but I also know what the cube root of 8 is. So I'm actually going to focus on that. So the cube root of 8 is 2, and then 2 squared is 4. So that'll actually be a little bit easier to work with. Cube root of 8 is 2. 2 squared is 4. Now I want to solve. So to solve, I need to subtract this 4. So I get negative x equals 4 minus 4 is 0. And then divide by negative. 0 divided by negative is still a 0. So my solution is 0. Now I just got to check it. So to check, we have... 3 plus parentheses 4 minus 0 close parentheses raised to the 3 halves is supposed to equal to an 11. So 3 plus parentheses 4 minus 0 close parentheses raised to the parentheses 3 divided by 4 close parentheses is supposed to give us an 11. Oh, I'm, I, I apologize. I was supposed to put a 3 over 2 there, not a 3 over 4. 3 over 2. So let me retype this in. 3 plus parentheses 4 minus 0, parentheses raised to the parentheses 3 divided by 2, close parentheses. That does give us an 11. So yes, this does work as long as you type in the correct fraction. I apologize for that. So it does work. That means x equals 0 is the correct answer. No extraneous solution on that one. The last problem, again, highlight the fraction exponent and the parentheses it's attached to. Now I want to get that alone, so I have that 5 right there. I want to get rid of that 5 by subtracting it. So we end up with parentheses 3x plus 1 parentheses raised to the 1 third is equal to negative 5. Now we want to, since this is isolated, we want to raise it to the reciprocal. The reciprocal of one-third is 3 over 1. So we can write 3 over 1, or we can just write it as cubed. So both, both mean the same thing. 3 over 1 is the same thing as cubed. So we have, this will become just the 3x plus 1 equals negative 5 cubed, okay, so a negative 5 times a negative 5 is a positive 25, times a negative 25 is a negative 125. 
So yes, you can have a negative something cubed, which will give you a negative. So to continue solving this, we want to subtract the 1. So we'll have 3x equals negative 126. Then we would want to divide by the 3. So we would end up getting x equals negative 42. So to check this, so we have an answer. We only have one solution. So to check, we have parentheses, three parentheses, because this is three times something, so I'm going to put an extra set of parentheses. Negative 42, close parentheses, plus 1, close parentheses, raised to the 1 third, plus 5 is supposed to equal to 0. So this one's going to be a little bit more tricky to type in. So we have parentheses, 3, open parentheses again, negative 42, close parentheses, then plus 1, close that parentheses, because that's the inside. We're going to raise it to the power of parentheses, 1 divided by 3, close parentheses, but then we still have to go out of that and add 5 to that. And it should give us 0. It does. That means that this answer does work. So 0 does, uh, it did give us a 0, so that's a check. That means that this is not an extraneous solution. Our answer is correct. So again, we need to check for extraneous solutions because on cases where you have two answers, you could potentially have an extraneous or they could both work. So you really do need to make sure you check all answers in the original problem and you can use your calculator for this. Just remember that when you have a rational exponent, a fraction exponent, if your radical turns into an even root, you have to put the plus or minus in front of it.